A lot of artists talk about wanting to get signed by a record label, but they don't realize that they first need to do all the things that they're hoping the record label will do for them in order to get noticed by record label execs. It's a huge catch-22 that a lot of artists don't realize, but at the end of the day, it falls in your court first. You need to become your own record label before you can attract a record label. You need to check off all the boxes yourself before you can expect a record label to take over those tasks. So in this video, I'm gonna go over every single task that a record label does so that you can start doing them right now. This is going to be a longer video because I want to create an exhaustive list of everything you need to focus on as an independent artist if you want to one day attract a record label to back your artist career. So let's discuss. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Ryan from the Indie Music Academy and you're watching the channel where we uncover the mysteries of the music industry, learn how to grow a larger fan base and earn an income from our music. And today I'm gonna to go over everything that you need to do as an independent artist to attract record labels. And here's the thing, you need to pretty much have all of these things established as an indie first if you want to attract the eyes of a record label who is going to support you, fund your projects, help you with marketing, right? All of that is good, but in order to attract that help, you have to have what I call a proof of concept. You have to demonstrate first that you're a worthwhile investment, and you have to do so by setting a lot of these things into place beforehand. And there's a few categories that I wanna talk about. First is having a plan, second is creating content, third is generating income, and fourth is making strategic alliances. And all of these things record labels will help you do, but you have to do these things first. So uh, with that, let's dive into creating a plan. When you're signed by a record label, when you get signed, when you sign on the dotted line, you are gonna have a team that is helping to dictate and determine what your moves are as a musician. This is going to help you by taking a load off your plate, right? People are gonna decide for you where you need to be, what you need to do, what kind of creative output you need. And that is helpful because sometimes restrictions are helpful, right? Sometimes limitations can provide focus. But here's the thing. When you're an independent artist, it's kind of hard to put those limitations on yourself because as an independent artist, you can do anything you wanna do, right? You don't have a manager uh, that is dictating your daily task, right? You don't, you don't have a record label telling you how much you need to make or how much creative output you need. So as an independent artist, it's kind of hard to think about having a plan because no one's making it for you. But in order to generate some attention from a record label, and it doesn't have to be a big record label, it can be an independent record label, or it can even be some of those record label type distributor services like AWOL offers my distributor, or Symphonic Distribution has it, even SoundCloud Repost has some label services that you need to apply for, and you need to show that you have a plan in place because they're not gonna invest the time and the talent of their staff on an artist that doesn't show potential. So the first is that you have to have your own creative output goals. A record label is gonna place those goals on you if you're signed, but as an independent artist, you need to set those goals yourself. So what does that mean? It means that, well, you need to decide how many songs you're gonna release within a year. Is it going to be a single every month? Is it gonna be a single every other month? Are you gonna even release an album this year? You need to set those goals and then try to stick to them. But here's the thing, these are internal goals, not external goals, which means don't set the release date for an album you didn't finish yet, right? Don't uh, announce to your audience every single release you're going to complete for the whole year uh, because you may or may not hit these goals. But what I'm trying to say is you need to set goals so you're not flying by the seat of your pants when it comes to your release schedule and even content schedule and stuff like that. So next is a spending plan. When you are signed to a record label, they are gonna give you a budget to work within. But as an independent artist, you need to set your own spending plan as well. And there are a few categories. Obviously, how much are you gonna spend 
on the creation of music. And this could be studio time, this could be gear, this can be hiring musicians on Soundbetter or Nashville for Hire, right? Professional musicians to help you get the recording that's in your head. Um, mixing, mastering, engineers, all of that stuff, right? But then there's also the marketing. What kind of marketing budget are you gonna set aside or what kind of marketing budget do you need to fundraise for, right? If you're not setting your spending goals, then you're not even gonna know what you need to shoot for as far as income. And we'll talk about income a little bit later. But setting those goals uh, for the whole year, if you're talking about marketing and how much you're gonna expend, but also setting goals for profits. How much money do you want to make? What is a goal that is achievable? Right in my last video, I talked about smart goals, so it's a good time to use those, uh, right? But setting goals for income is important because if you don't plan, uh, to make money, it's going to be really hard to make the moves that are going to make you profitable. Okay, so uh, and then next income goals. Uh, I'll say one more thing about that is that if you're not setting income goals, right, if you're not trying to replace your last job or even make an extra thousand bucks a month, right, you're not going to be able to work backwards as to how to achieve that, right? So if you're setting income goals, then you can work backwards and say, okay, I need to create a product now, or I need to finally set up that Patreon, right? It's cause and effect. If you're not creating the products and if you're not selling, then you're not gonna generate an income. And that's why I really encourage you to check out my music selling through storytelling course, which is gonna help you with these skills, these selling skills that we need to learn as musicians because before we're signed to a record label, we need to do our own selling and we need to do a lot of the uh, activities that a whole team would do as a solopreneur musician. So if you're interested in that, I have a link in the description below. But the fourth and final plan that you need to create is your brand awareness plan. What channels are you gonna post on? Which ones are the important channels? And which ones are the ones you're gonna ignore, right? Depending on your age, depending on the type of music you make, TikTok could be really crucial to your growth, or it could not be at all. Maybe you're more of a Facebook person and that's where you're gonna grow your fan base. Who knows? It's gonna be unique to your situation, but having a plan as to where you're gonna post and how you're going to gather fans is hugely important. A record label will set that plan for you, but as an independent artist, you need to make that plan yourself. Next, I wanna dive into the world of content creation because even when you're signed, the label's not gonna make content for you. You need to demonstrate that you have this ability yourself. And but every day, every moment that we move into this new music industry, that we move into the future, Content creation is becoming more and more intertwined as a prerequisite for being a successful artist. If you can make great content and great music, that's a marriage made in heaven for success in the music industry today, especially as an unsigned artist, but that's gonna continue even after you get signed. Okay, so there's four areas that I wanna to touch on because you need to be a content creation machine for yourself first, and then you're gonna to have to be a content creation machine for the label once you're signed. So the first category, of course, this is the obvious one, music, singles, and albums. You need to have the ability to create those, not just the, the songwriting part, because obviously, I'm assuming that you have the songwriting part mostly down, but the actual recording and the delivering of a master recording needs to be handled by you early on. You need to figure out the budgets like I just talked about, but you also have to figure out where you're gonna do it. Are you gonna do it in your home studio? Are you gonna invest in a space and in a setup where you can have radio quality, ready to release and distribute music that you create either yourself or with the help of a trusted team or a trusted producer or select people who you've found over the years uh, on various platforms or maybe in your community. So music and albums, they need to be completely under your control. And that's a really great sign to these record labels that you have a high creative output. And that's very attractive. So if you're releasing regular singles, uh, regular albums, either an, an album a year, an album every other year, that's gonna be very attractive to record labels who are looking for artists who are going to produce a lot of content, right? And so remember, songs are just one type of content. Next, 
we're gonna talk about music videos. Now there's so many, so many types of music videos. There are lyric videos, there are the stripped down, very simple acoustic music videos, and then there are the cinematic, multi-venue, multi-location music videos that are shot over multiple days and have larger budgets and are more of an investment. And then there are also the videos of you performing live, right? All these different types of music videos need to be generated by you first, right? Imagine trying to sign or book an artist if they've uh, never posted a live concert, right? You don't know what they sound like live. You don't know what kind of fan engagement they have on stage or stage presence uh, for that matter. And it's really hard as a label to get a clear view of the potential of this artist if it's not documented on camera, right? So don't just focus on the cinematic music videos. You wanna make a variety. Even lyric videos can be great for engagement, uh, for advertising on Facebook. So music videos, you need to generate those yourself in order to attract the attention of labels who will then probably fund your future music videos, but it doesn't start there, it starts now. The third type of content you need to create as an indie that will attract the attention of record labels are these mini documentary style videos that you see a lot for the pro artists, but not so much for independent artists. And if you do one of these, it's really going to help you stand out. And here's the reason why. These mini documentary films that are like three, four minutes long, you might think, well, this is just the same stuff I'm putting in my content, right? In my content on TikTok or on Instagram, I'm just supposed to share my life and share my story, right? And that, I'm already doing that over there on social media. But here's the thing, if you film a mini documentary going behind the scenes of an album or whatever story behind the songwriting that you might wanna share, this is actually doing more for your branding than anything that you can potentially put on your website, any bio that you could potentially write on your website. Uh, it just pales in comparison to a mini documentary style video that you can obviously take some time to work on, but then that will stick around for multiple months, if not years, and it can help uh, just bring a lot of attention to your music brand and help you stand out from the crowd. Because here's the thing, record labels, they are run by humans. They're run by people. And if you're able to evoke an emotional response in the person who's checking out your music on behalf of the label, that's really gonna set you above and apart from all the other people they might be checking out right now. Okay, next category you need to focus on as an independent artist in order to attract the attention of record labels is that you need to become a multi-sourced income generation machine. Now, record labels, you need to understand this, they wanna make money off of you, the artist. They're gonna sign you because they have money signs in their eyes. They think that they're gonna miss out if they don't sign you, right? There's FOMO involved. You have to have something going on already that they wanna be a part of. And of course, money is the center of it. You need to learn how to generate your own income streams to even look remotely attractive to a record label who is also trying to generate money. So you might be asking, where do you start with this as an independent artist? How do you even begin to make money as an independent artist? And I would tell you the very first place you need to start are with products. And products can be very, very simple. Obviously, there are the cliche ones, shirts, hats, beanies, stickers, all this stuff. And then there's, of course, the, the physical printed CD. But you can think outside of the box with products as well. You can have digital products. You can have a membership like Patreon. I always bring up Patreon because it's one of the easiest ways to build a subscription product as a musician, right? And you can even have handmade, homemade products that you sell at a higher price because they're literally one of a kind and not just stamped and printed by the manufacturing company. So products are huge. You need to learn how to sell products, probably uh, directly from your mailing list. And if you don't have a mailing list, check out some of my other videos where I teach you some easy ways to get started building an email list for your music. So if you don't have products, 
and you're not making money that way, it's not going to be very attractive for the label who are definitely going to want to implement a product strategy, right? Every sign artist has products and a product strategy. So if you're doing this first, and once again, you're building a case study for success with yourself that you can show to a label, this is going to be huge. You have to have a proof of concept that you can even sell that shirt, that your branding is strong enough and your fan base and your, your fan relationships are strong enough to be able to sell that shirt in the first place. So proof of concept, proof of sale, you need to be working on this and building products is one of the best ways to get started. Okay, next, you need to become a multi-source income generating machine. Record labels are gonna be very attracted to that. We talked about product creation. Now I wanna talk about endorsements, brand endorsements. If you have an audience, if you've been able to build an audience on your Instagram, on your TikTok, even your mailing list, whatever it might be, you should consider thinking of very low level, easy to maintain brand endorsements to earn some money. And this doesn't have to be salesy. You don't have to sell out. You should just start with products you already use to be frank, but endorsements are a great way to show that you have the selling skills to generate an income beyond just the songs that you create, right? And record labels are gonna be hugely attracted to this because you've seen this, I've seen this. The top artists that are assigned to the top labels, they all have brand endorsements. I mean, let's not even limit it to artists, sports stars, movie stars, whoever it is, whether you're in the Marvel MCU or you're on a television show, if you're an influencer of any type, you have products to endorse and you get paid to do so. Now, it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be every single post every single week. It doesn't even have to be very much work, but I would look into this if you have a sizable audience and I would start to build the skill of affiliate selling that is gonna be so valuable down the line once your audience grows even larger as a signed artist. The next income stream you have to have locked down before you get signed are all of your music royalties. If you don't have this under control, not only are you gonna be missing out on basically free money, right? The money that's generated from Spotify streams, the money that's generated from YouTube views and even downloads on iTunes, if that's even still happening, right? But it's also showing that you don't have an understanding of the industry that you're in. If you don't have all the proper registrations in place, it just screams amateur, and it's really a negative mark on your report card when record labels are taking a look at your career. Now, thankfully, I've taken care of all of this for you. I have lots of resources at the Indie Music Academy website, like the Music Royalty Map, which will literally give you a visual map of every place that you need to register to collect all your royalties. Also, in the 8020 Music Business Crash Course, I teach you about music publishing, music copyright, to copyright all your songs correctly and how to collect all your royalties using just a few collection services, the easy way I call it. So check those products out. If you are falling behind in this category, I'll leave a link in the description below for all of that, but it's all prepackaged, ready to go for you to get the checklist and the instruction in order to just completely obliterate this off your to-do list. So that's all I really have to say about royalties. It's not that hard. You just need a little bit of guidance. It takes some time to register everything, but you should do it. Don't just let that fall on the back burner forever and ever until you forget about it again. So last but not least, another part of your multi-source income generating strategy that's supposed to attract record labels and make you a prime candidate are investors. Now, I'm not talking about investors like businesses. What I'm talking about is that Patreon membership that I really recommend that you start looking into building, okay? Patrons and financial supporters of your music can make the difference between a starving artist and one that's actually making a living and able to do all the things that I talked about in this list, right? Because you're not working that Starbucks barista job anymore. That's the job I used to work at, by the way, right? If you have the income that, that frees you up from the day job, then you can focus on your artist career. I'm not saying you just quit your job 
right now and create a Patreon with zero supporters, right? I believe that you should build up your Patreon membership at the same time you're working your side job and then use what I call the parallel train cars analogy, right? If you have two train cars and one of them is moving fast and one of them's moving slow, if you jump from one to the other, you're going to break your ankles and fall off the train and die, right? So the fast moving train car is your day job. That's the consistent revenue. That's your consistent money, right? And the slow moving train car, that might be your artist career right now. That might be your Patreon membership with one or two members, right? Only pulling in maybe 25 bucks a month, right? Not life changing money, definitely not enough money to quit your day job, right? So the fast train car is your day job. The slow train car is your music career. So what I would encourage you to do is work on both at the same time so that the trains can come up to speed and get a little closer to speed with one another, right? Even if your music career is running a little bit slower, if it's closer in speed, you can jump from one train car to the other and catch your balance a little bit. Yes, it might be a cut in income. You might have a couple of tough months as you're adjusting, readjusting your budgets and spending, but you're not gonna break your ankles and fall off the train and, and face plant into, let's just say it's grass, right? Let's just say it's, uh, it's survivable, but you still don't wanna face plant off that train you're jumping off of, right? So hopefully that analogy makes sense. And that's why I love Patreon because it's content driven, right? You can build a membership product that is based around your content, your personality. All you have to do is just share your life, share yourself. And there's a there's a few ways I suggest that you structure this that I go over in the 8020 Music Business Crash Course, uh, where you wanna make sure that you're not creating a second job for yourself, right? The, the Patreon shouldn't take hours and hours and hours of your time, and you definitely don't wanna create more work for yourself than it's worth, right? So I, I give you some parameters on how to set it up in the course, but um, the fact of the matter is, it's one of the best ways to build your income as an independent artist, and you might even get to the point where your income is so good, you've grown your fan base organically, and you've been able to monetize using these free tools that you might not even need to get signed anymore. But that's a topic for another video. All right, guys, the fourth and final thing you need to put into place in order to become your own record label is to build strategic alliances. And real quick, I'll just say, I know this is a long video. I know I'm talking fast and I'm really trying to cram this into a good uh, listening experience. So thanks for sticking uh, with me through the video this far. This is really important because record labels, they have a built-in network that you will take advantage of once you get signed. This is probably the most important benefit to getting signed. There's a lot of downsides to getting signed, but this is the most important benefit is that you actually, you're, you're in the party now, you're in the club, you can songwrite with people that you wouldn't have access to before. You have finances that you wouldn't have had access to before. But here's the thing, before you get signed, you need to build your own strategic connections. And the first place you should start is with playlist influencers. I'm talking about people who have built an audience on streaming platforms such as Spotify. They have playlists with lots of followers, lots of traffic, lots of engagement, and you should build relationships with people who can get you on those playlists because here's the thing, one of the most important metrics that record labels care about are your Spotify monthly listeners and your Spotify streams. So if you are going to make the most attractive portfolio possible, you will work on building relationships with playlist influencers. Now, how do you do this? Well, you can either get in touch with people like me who already have connections with playlist influencers and I can help you out, or you can do it the long and hard way by uh, just looking for playlists on the internet, looking for influencers who might have put their contact information out there, and it's uh, truly hit or miss. You don't know if the playlist is gonna be great or you don't know if the playlist is gonna be you know, awful and have bots and kind of ruin your analytics. So um, I, all I'm trying to say is just be careful. Uh, there are people who have been doing this a long time, like myself, who can definitely help you. So reach out if you feel like you want that help, and I'd be more than happy to point you in the right direction. 
So uh, playlist influencers are huge, uh, specifically because of Spotify and that being an important metric for labels in order to judge kind of uh, how desirable you are as an artist. Really similarly, a strategic alliance that you need to build are bloggers to get blog placements. And this is huge, you know, blogs are an interesting thing. They're not gonna really uh, convert directly into fans, but what they do is more prepare your brand and give your brand a lot of clout in order to present your entire career and brand to labels as a desirable artist. Now blogs are strange. They don't really result directly into fan base growth like you might think, but instead it prepares and it seasons your brand with references and articles that make you so much more attractive to those on the outside looking at your artist career. And of course, record labels fall into that category. If they're looking at you, if record execs are looking at you and they see blog features and song reviews and lots of write-ups and, and people recommending and, and people who've gone to your concert and have written about it, and it's all from reputable sources, this is a huge, huge, huge positive in regards to your overall appeal as an artist. Getting blog placements is almost like its own category of marketing. You have to start at the bottom and work your way up, right? You're not gonna get into Rolling Stone magazine without having features from lesser blogs to begin with, right? So my recommendation is get started now. Even if you only have one or two songs out, you need to build these blog features over time because it will take time and uh, it's gonna take time to build those relationships. Same with playlist influencers, so start now getting those blog features. They want to see the value and they want to see the money that they can make. So you need to make it as obvious as possible to record labels and blog placements are a great way to show your value. Okay, next in the category of strategic alliances are getting on other artists' tours. Getting on a tour is great for your resume. It shows that you can play multiple shows night after night. It shows that you're willing to travel, which is most likely what you're gonna have to do when you're signed, right? So once again, proof of concept. They need to know that you can actually do this and live the life that they're expecting you to live. And on top of that, getting on someone's tour is going to help your fan base grow in a huge way. You're basically going to be borrowing from the fan base of the bigger band or the bigger artist that you're on tour with. So getting on tour is not easy. It's definitely gonna take a lot of networking and strategy and asking around, right? But it's a strategic alliance worth looking into because that can lead to more opportunities in the performance category. It can lead to festivals, it can lead to more tours, and it can also lead to shows where you're the headlining artist in those cities that you've visited in the past. Okay, last but not least, the strategic alliance that you need to make right now in order to look more attractive to record labels are of course with other artists. You need to do strategic collabs, and that might be uh, through social media posts, that might be a YouTube video or a cover song that you do with another artist. But here's the thing, artists need to be in community with other artists. This is a fact. This is why I have the indie growth community on my website where artists can mingle and share ideas and even work together. And I try to facilitate this community and, and mentor them and build relationships around everyone's artistry, but even if you're not inside my community, you still need to have a community surrounding you. You need to be in community with other artists and then create things with them. This is the same concept as going on tour, right? If you are an opening act for a headlining band, you are getting exposed to the audience of the headlining band. So similarly, if you do a collab uh, with another artist, right, on a cover song video, for example, let's just say it's that, artist A is gonna be posting that to this their fan base and artist B is gonna be doing the same and there's gonna be fan mingling and fan sharing between the two artists and that's good. That's gonna grow your fan base and it's gonna grow the fan base of the collaborating artist. So it's good for everyone all around. Artists need to be doing more collaborations, but it's not just for, uh, for songs, right? I don't wanna give you the impression that it either needs to be a songwriting collab or a cover collab or anything like that. 
you should just make content with other artists as well, even if it's casual. It doesn't have to be about music at all. It can just be about your life. You can just meet up and do an activity, do a cooking show, or do uh, something outdoors, go on a hike with another artist and share your personalities together so that there's fan mingling, and this is huge. And it's also showing the network, it's showing your fans the network that you're in, but it's also showing the label that you are connected and that you're really doing this music thing in the right way inside of a community. So this is huge. I really encourage you to meet other artists in person. It might start by going to their shows and supporting them and then asking them to do the same in return and building a relationship kind of from a distance, but then you can close that distance in by planning some kind of content or activity after you made that initial connection and the relationship has begun. Guys, if this video was helpful to you, can I just ask you a quick favor and it's to hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button to support this channel. I'm doing my best to bring you the very best insights and information on how to approach independent artistry today in this new music industry. So if this was helpful, thanks for all of your support. Remember, I left some links down below in the description of some products and some trainings that I highly recommend you check out. But also, I have a free workshop that I've made for you in advance. If you wanna dive into something that's super uh, consumable, super easy, and brings a lot of value as well. I made a workshop, all you have to do is let me know which email to send it to, and I'll send you some videos, some eBooks, and some informative emails that'll help guide your independent artistry. And hopefully you don't have to go it alone. I wanna be there to help you, even virtually, uh, because it's always better to work together and to have someone supporting you and helping you even before you have that label supporting and helping you. So hopefully I can be that person. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and you enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully I get to see you in a future video on this channel. So thanks so much for watching to the end and I'll see you soon. Best of luck in your music career. Take care.